This automation mod that looks like a Formula One car flies farther on Car Jump Arena than any other car I have ever seen. Why is that? Find out in this video. Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Anarchy Motorsports Chaos 004X. What a ridiculously long name this thing has. So I should mention to you now that this is an automation car, so the collisions aren't going to be that interesting. The interesting thing is everything else about the car. So we're going to get the collisions out of the way right now. So we'll just get it up to speed and find something to crash into. We're going over 100 miles per hour. We got the slow motion and we got something to crash into. There we go. There's a crash. We got pieces flying everywhere, which is pretty nice. But if you look at what remains of the car, it just kind of looks weird because you see pieces that are just floating in the air for no real reason. So the crashes themselves look good. The results, eh, don't look too close with them. Instead, let's focus on what makes this car so interesting. So instead of having a normal engine, it has a turbine engine, which is basically the same as if you were to strap rockets to a car. And the neat thing about this turbine engine is it can work in the air. So yes, you can kind of fly this car in the air. I say kind of because you don't have that much control over it. You can steer like a normal car and you can kind of tilt it in the direction you want to go sometimes. But if you were to ask me to actually do some precise flying with this thing, there's not a chance of that happening. So I'll give you a demonstration. I'm going to try to go back to the roads around West Coast USA and land on one of them. And landing is one of those things that's a lot harder than you'd expect because we just have a thruster and steering. So you don't have any way to tilt the car forward and back or a way to slow it down while we're in the air. We have just the most basic of controls, which means this is going to be a crash landing. I'll do my best to make it smooth. The first thing we got to figure out is where in the world are we actually landing? So we're getting close to the ground. And this is one thing you can do kind of consistently, just flying above the ground like I'm doing here as I look for a landing spot. And there's a road. Let's try to land on that road. That was a harsh landing. It definitely could have gone a lot worse though. Because other times I tried to do a landing like that and I just slammed directly into a building. Which wasn't even close to landing if you think about it. And since this is thruster powered, we can still accelerate even after we lose all the wheels, which is kind of fun. So we're flying in the air and well, we were flying in the air. We've lost the last few pieces that remain basically. And again, you can see the damage, but nothing really to talk about there. So let's get a fresh one. And one thing that's funny is every time, right as you spawn the car up, the little damage indicator in the bottom left corner of the screen comes up saying, Hey, your engine is blown up or something. And it's like, but the car is working perfectly. Are you sure about that? Like right now you see the engine is bright red saying everything is terrible. And I'm over here flying in the air like everything is great. Even doing a pretty smooth landing there. Got to slam on the brakes. Oh man. We were braking so hard. We broke the front suspension. I don't think that was for me landing the car too hard. Now, unfortunately, this car has absolutely no idea what a reverse gear is, so all we can do is keep going forward until we smash into the end of the docks, and then you get to see all the pieces that fell off of the car. All right, so how about we go for one more flight, and I'll show you the only way I found to successfully land the vehicle and continue driving afterwards. It's definitely kind of cheating, but at the same time, it's a brilliant strategy. So first, you just gotta get into the air, and there we go, don't touch the ground. And we got to fly nice and low. We got to stay really close to the water because we're going to use the water to dampen the impact of my landing. And I'm going to drive on the island directly ahead of me. So just try to get it nice and gently into the water. Got some damage, of course. But after that, all four wheels are attached. And of course, the engine is still going to work because the engine is big and strong. Now, what do we do after we get to this island? Nah, I don't really know. There's not much we can do with this car. It just kind of bounces all over the place because this terrain is way too rough. But I just wanted to point out that I can land the vehicle. It's just a really unusual way of doing it. And since we're talking about the water, now's a good time to mention it also works as either a submarine or a boat. So this car can literally do anything. Driving on land, check. Driving in air, check. Driving in water, check. Driving on water, also check. Amazing versatility. Although I will admit it's not really good with the water aspects, but the fact that you can do it is definitely worth mentioning. And doing this corner, you gotta bounce the front of the car 
off of the blockade to make it right. That was funny. But as I said earlier, we ain't got no reverse gear. So super glue those parts back on and we are going into the water. And you see on initial entry, we can just drive on the bottom. Is that another check mark? Sure, why not? Driving under the water, check. But once you get a little bit angled upwards, then you can be a submarine and just kind of maintain submarine heights. And you get bored of that, you pop your head out of the water and ta-da, you're a boat. Just barely, but you're kind of a boat because you are right on the edge of the water as you go up there. Unfortunately, no matter what you do, you're always just going to go in a circle, it seems like. You can try to steer to the left, try to steer to the right, not really going to do anything. But it is still the most versatile vehicle I have ever seen. The good news is, is even though it's like a 3 out of 10 on the water and a 5 out of 10 in the air, it's a 10 out of 10 when it's driving on the ground. So why don't we try to do a high speed run and see just how fast it can get. And as we go through these corners, you do see it has very nice handling and very strong brakes. The brakes are so strong, the whole vehicle bounces around trying to slow down. Watch this right here. Bam, hitting those brakes. Look at that bounciness. But look at that stopping distance. That's the important thing. It might look a little ugly when it slows down, but dang, does it do a good job of slowing down. Now we have a perfect road to see how fast can it go in a straight line. And the answer to that is very fast. It's easily eclipsing over 200 miles per hour and it just keeps accelerating. This car, it's not exactly fast out of the dig. The thing is it keeps accelerating all the way until almost 300 miles per hour before it really starts to give up on you. And we can try to go around this corner at these speeds, but it's not happening. But ooh, look what we can do. We can ride the wall. Wall riding is a legitimate strategy in some racing games. In BMG Drive, it's not really a legitimate strategy at all. In fact, if you try to wall ride, your car will fall to pieces just like mine did. And one thing that's really cool is when you steer the car from left to right, you can really see the movement in the suspension. So look at this. It's a thing of beauty. Now let me tell you probably one of the worst things about this car, and that is the collisions for the vehicle. So to give you an idea of how bad they are, I'm going to spawn up another one of these guys right in front of me, and then we're just going to crash into his rear ever so slightly. And you can see technically right now I am crashing into him because the J-beam structure goes way past the actual body of the vehicle. And then also, if we were to do something else dumb, like teleport this guy on top of the other car, he will just basically float. Those are just some small side effects you get when you try to make a Formula One style car in automation, I assume. But I had to mention them because they can be kind of weird when you do some collisions. Now I want to see just how fast can it go around a racetrack. So to test it out, let's go to the automation test track. And all we're going to do is a quick lap of the place to get an idea of how fast it actually is. And if I had to guess, I would think this car would be a good bit faster around the track than any of the cars that come with the game, which basically just means it's faster than the track variants and the hill climb variants. And it feels like it's better than any of those other cars in every way except for really low speed maneuvers. So we can fly through this corner at like 150 miles per hour, slam on the brakes super late and still make it into the corner. It takes a second for it to start accelerating again, but then it just doesn't quit accelerating. That's the weird thing about this engine is the zero to 60 feels like it's the same as the 60 to 120. It just has consistent acceleration that will not let you up because we're already up to 200 miles per hour and look at how easily it's still pulling up to 240 miles per hour. And the only reason we slowed down is because this car is so fast I can barely drive it and I accidentally went in the dirt a little bit. It also feels like the grip itself though is much better than you'll get in any of the cars that come with the game. And you also see that in the braking, those tires are so grabby. The whole car is just shaking, trying to slow it down as fast as possible. And my goodness, do those brakes do their job. This thing stops on an absolute dime. And then also the steering under acceleration is different than the normal car because you're not putting power down to the wheels. You're just thrusting forward. So you're not gonna have to ever think about wheel spin and accelerating too early because you're just getting pushed which means you could probably drive this thing even faster than I am if you drove it like a rocket powered car. But so far I was just driving it like a normal Formula One car. But that's a lap and that's a wrap and that's a crash. All the pieces are flying off and 
we're flying a little bit too into the trees so just for fun let's go ahead and take a look at all the pieces that flew all over the place there we go lots of destruction and now to demonstrate how this car's acceleration is unusual we're going to do a drag race at west coast usa against a drag car and of course my car is going to be let me take a breath the anarchy motorsports chaos 004x and then for their car I'm going to go ahead and give them the drag version of the Moonhawk, which is my favorite of the drag configurations. We'll go ahead and turn off cinematic camera because I don't need to deal with that. And here's probably the hardest part, trying to line up for the drag race because we can't back up. We have to make sure we do it just right. A little more, a little more. Okay. And you see, right off the line, they are so much faster than me. They are going to beat my time for sure but here's the interesting thing look at the trap speeds I may have been over a second slower than them but my trap speed is higher because I keep accelerating their car starts to slow down and mine just getting into the groove and it keeps going and going and going it's all the way up to 240 miles per hour before it hits the end and then it goes for a little bit of a flight where's it gonna land I have no clue at all Wow, that was a miracle. It dodged every single tree and made it all the way to the water. How in the world did it manage that? I have absolutely no clue. And just because I'm curious, I want to see what happens if you try to drag race the AI and they have this car as well. I have no idea what's going to happen with this setup. They might drive it fine or they might not move at all. Ah, oh, they are moving. At first, I thought they weren't going to move at all. Okay, so this is good. This is promising. They staged up better than I could. And I am just a little bit better off the line in terms of reaction time, but our cars are identical in performance since there's not much we can do besides activate thrusters. But I wasn't sure if they'd be able to drive it or not. And look at that. I beat them by less than a tenth of a second. And we got this speed already going, right? So we got to go for another flight real quick. So again, we're going to hit the mountain at like 240 miles per hour, trying to get a different angle this time. Ooh, that was an ugly angle. I crashed into a rock or something. So we did not fly nearly as much as last time. Well, that car's done. So now for some extra testing of the flying capabilities, why don't we head over to Car Jump Arena? And I want to try a couple of things here. First, I want to see what does it look like if we accelerate all the way down and then we use no thruster at all as we fly through the air? Because I think this car actually is generating lift. That means at the end of the ramp, it should actually go up instead of just fall like a rock. All right, falling, falling. But there's the lift. See, it is generating some sort of lift as it's actually going up. And it looks like it's going to try to climb the mountain, but it's not quite going to make it. So it's just going to go splat right into the mountain but actually with a uh, surprisingly little damage i thought it would crumple down but the shape of the car is still present somehow so why don't we do another run and seeing stuff like this it really gets me thinking if i did that thing where i put a dumb clip at the start of the video i would be like this automation mod that looks like a formula one car flies farther on car jump arena than any other car i have ever seen why is that find out in this video and oh yeah, look at this lift. We are easily out over the edge of the map. No doubt about that. I could easily just let it fall to the ground from here and it way overshoots those mountains. So we'll do one more test from this jump. What I want to see now is, do the thrusters work if you go straight and then at the very last second you try to go to the left to make it fly towards the left? So leftwards and... Ooh, it kind of works. That actually kind of works. And you know what? The car is telling me it wants to do the big jump looking thing right there. I don't even know what to call that thing, but it wants to do that and show off how amazing it would be at that because it'll just go to the top and smash into the top, I'm pretty sure. So I'll teleport the car over to the top of the ramp, reset it, and now we are ready to go. And this is very, very easy, requiring absolutely no effort by me at all. All I do is hold the accelerator down and we go over 200 miles per hour. And this thing is going to hit the top so easy because I'm not letting up. I'm still accelerating. We are going 700, 800, 900, and 
smashing into the end, absolutely crumpling the vehicle. And then we got it raining down parts, which looks pretty cool as well. And I think that will do it for Car Jump Arena. Now we're going to head over to another map great for flying, Leap of Death. And just like Car Jump Arena, I want to try a couple of things here. First run, it's going to be just like Car Jump Arena. We accelerate as much as we can until we get to the ramp. And once we hit the ramp, we let off and just let gravity take over. And after seeing this guy fly at Car Jump Arena, I'm thinking it should easily be able to make it all the way to the other end of Leap of Death. And we're going to find out in, well, it's flying pretty slowly, so let's say 18 seconds. Although, if I was a betting man, I would bet you $100,000 right now that it's going to make it because it's actually going upwards. There's no way it's not going to make it all the way to there. So here comes the impact in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, don't blink. There goes the crash. And you know what? We might be able to still thrust through this thing. Let's go. Not really. So we'll let it fall all the way to the bottom of Leap of Death because this is a different side of Leap of Death than you would normally see. We don't usually get to fall from this direction. I'm trying to think, like, when was the last time this happened? And it was probably the last time I had another flying vehicle here. Because I've never actually driven to the other side just to jump off of it. That's something I should do someday, right? Just take a look at Leap of Death from the other side. The side you never get to see. It's like the dark side of the moon over here. It's all a big fat mystery to the world's best scientists. Like me. I am the world's best scientist. No, I'm not. Not even close. Fall off the cliff and safe. All right. Now we're going to do the exact opposite. And we're just going to use the thrusters the whole time and see just how nicely can we fly around Leap of Death. And I've noticed it seems like the car more often than not wants to fly towards the left. I don't know if it's just a coincidence, but we're going to see what it does here. And it's again going to the left. I don't know if it's just the direction I always steer ends up making it go left, but it, it goes left. So here we go. We're going to fly. And are we going to hit the mountains? We're going to go over them. We'll slow it down maybe a little bit. Try to not overshoot them. All right. This is looking pretty good. Try to get close, but don't make an actual impact with it. Oh, this might be too close. Hold on. Ooh, that was nice. Anyways, I think that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how well the vehicle flies. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.